Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Long Range Planning Committee meeting of July the 12th, 2023. Our first item this morning is, uh, before I review the minutes, what I'd like to do is to move Portia up to a voting member this morning. And there's Mr. Shanae. Oh, hey, Ray. So we do have a quorum, which is awesome. Um, so let's, at this point, uh, take a look at and review our meetings of the June 7th meeting. Um, the chair would entertain a motion to approve if the members so see fit to do that. Also moved. We have a second. Second, Portia is our second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there any discussion? Please see. I was going to vote then see. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> all in favor. All right. I show that to be unanimous. Okay, so at this point, I am going to rescind, I'm sorry, no my first movement <laughs> of moving Portia up to a voting member, and we'll have Robin become that voting member this morning. Um, and in terms of that as well, I would also like to announce that Robin is now going to become a full voting member at every meeting as a result of Ken Johnson, Ken Johnson resigning from the committee. The boards and committee members have, have to, to vote on that. Okay, they sure. have to vote. All right. <laughs> I just thought it happened. So. In our... <laughs> that was a question. The um nominating committee of the town council um i thought had made that automatic um so it's in in the event it's not yeah. let me put yeah. this forth i would like to move that robin become a full voting member of this board moving forward is there a second peter thank you any discussion yeah that's a second you agree with me all the time right no, that's something you agree with me all the time, right? hundred percent. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm a, so little, I'm a little confused on what we're voting about. Okay. All right. Is this a recommendation? Of yes. Do we actually have that power? We have that power, is my understanding. You all are making a recommendation, and I'll pass it on to yeah. Cody, Tom Clark, to pass on to the committee. All right. So she was our first alternate. Right. Ben well, has I, left, so we have well, a, an open that. seat. Yep. Uh, and Alan, I hear you saying this is going to do it. I hear Autumn saying this is not going to do it. So I'm. We actually, are not the final action. Action. This is just right, a so this is we a. We cannot take that. I will amend we, we my cannot. motion to a recommendation that she become the full voting member. Second. We have the second again. So uh, any other discussion? And, and, and Mara, just to be clear, she automatically becomes a voting member in the absence of a normal voting member um, in, in, a, in a given meeting. This is to recommend that she become a full voting member. Now, oh, I, I got it. it. I got it. So, yeah. We just right. It's a recommendation. Right. It's right. a recommendation. No, not, not and it's to the nominating committee of the town council, right? Okay. All right. So, at this point, if there's no other discussion, I will entertain a vote. All in favor. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I see that as unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, because you are a voting member at this meeting. <laughs> Understood. Thank you, sir. So following that up, I would recommend that we recommend to the nominating committee to move Portia from the second alternate to the first alternate position. Is second. there any... Mm -hmm. All right, so if I could just say, I've also put my name in for a position. Okay. As a voting member. Okay. You know, when did you do that? Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. and may I do that? Can you do that? As a, yes, I, 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 I had applied before yeah. to become a member. Okay. Will we then need a new planning committee? No. Please. Okay. No. Uh, and plus, I'm in my last term on the planning board. I'm okay. limited. Just curious about how the liaison stuff works. So. No, the no, the liaison is not um, 
is elected every year from the different boards and from the planning board. What is your term? Uh, and I had uh, my term ends in two years now. So could Karen be a voting member then if she got so nominated and all that, even though she's not a set go? Staff. No, no, she's staff. She's staff. Okay, got it. Right. And she's ill today, so she won't be joining. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just curious. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. I'm sorry. Uh, it, in Ken's submission of resignation, is that automatic? I mean, obviously, if somebody so mm -hmm. he's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, technically, he's still in that position until he is replaced. Okay. All right. Thanks. I believe. And and he doesn't have to come, obviously. No, no, yeah. no. I'm just it's just asking. Anybody, but yeah. You have the same issue with transportation. I you do. You have to wait for yes. Marvin to get Correct. appointed so you could be replaced. <laughs> Correct. John, you have comments, I can tell. No, no. Just trying to follow it on that. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, yeah. I'm on the appointments committee as well. So this, I mean, what will happen is we, we, have, we have a vacancy with Ken's yeah. right, resignation. Right. So um, any applicants that are on the file will get push to the next appointments and negotiations meeting, discuss if we want to fill the positions, move second alternates up and, and whatnot. And then that that goes to the full council um, for action over the next two meetings. Okay. And are, it, it's the summertime. Are you guys meeting in the um uh we're, we're meeting this week? Oh yeah okay gotcha. Okay yes Rob um I I would like to propose that Portia is the first alternate and perhaps Rachel is the second alternate, knowing that there are two years that can happen between now. A lot can happen in two years, as we know. So I'd like to see, I'd like to recommend that, that Portia be advanced to first alternate and Rachel be considered for second and best. You want to recommend that Rachel be um, second alternate? We can always re we can recommend whatever we want. Um, it's not to the, after the appointment. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. that's yeah. the town council. Yeah. 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 Because I, I do know, appointments yeah, yeah, I, I do know that there are a okay. few other applicants yeah. that have applied for long range planning. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize, I thought that they were already no. on Otherwise, the board, that they Robin, moved up. In, Robin would have moved up instead of Ken. Ken skipped a step, right? So, that's uh, how that would okay. All right. We still, I mean, yep. we can make recommendations, but that's fine. Guaranteed. Yep. Okay. And I don't know if you want to put that in the form of a motion or not. But I'd like to move that Portia is the first alternate and that Rachel become considered for a second alternate position. So that would be our formal recommendation as a committee, essentially. To that that is what I would like to move yeah. if anyone's interested in seconding that. Yeah, well. Okay, Peter. Any other discussion? discussion? Yeah. What? I'm, I'm, I'm in, at this point, just it's not a discussion, but my vote will be taken. I'm going to abstain. Um, I, I'm just in over my head about all these recommendations. Okay. I don't. I don't. It's as though I don't have a dog in the fight. I'd be happy to see everybody become whatever the committee recommends. And okay. Any other thoughts or comments? Do you all want to make one recommendation? In light of Ken's absence, that you'd like to see Robin moved up to voting member, Portia moved up to first alternate, and you recommend Rachel as a second alternate, and like I, one package. Is that a preferred way to do you, it? You know, we um, value the committee's input for these yeah. things, so I, I think if you have um, you know, recommendations, that's helpful mm -hmm. to the process. Okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah one as opposed to three. One. Yes. One clear one is. Okay. In, in, in the spirit of that, I, I think, you know, first off, Rachel will make a great voting member, she'll make a great alternate, uh, et cetera. It's more just, I think it's good for us as a committee to put our, hey, this would be great for us. To, and our opinion would be, I think, worded from a continuity perspective for um, to, to have sort of a, a, a good um, a conveyor belt of folks coming through and getting um, experience in the committee. Um, this would be our recommendation, but we defer, of course, to the um, appointments committee and the town council for whatever decision they have to make. So, okay. Peter, are you saying then that anyone that comes in from from the list of potential appointees would then come through the cycle to learn about the committee 
before yeah. they become a first or second alternate or whatever. And one of the things, yeah, and for example, on the zoning board, that's something we talked about explicitly, the idea that people should not, unless we had three vacancies, yeah. um, that we should um, have people start as second or for, or in the in the lowest alternate positions available and then come up through. Advanced. Yeah, it, it, it's, okay. it's just good apprenticeship sort exactly. of theory, so yeah. But given that, and whether we agree or not, the council is the ultimate decision correct. maker and they'll put people where they want to put them. That's correct. And the zoning board doesn't have a, a list of willing participants <laughs> raising their hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have a different issue, but yeah, exactly. Okay. So what I would like to propose at this point, or I don't know if it needs to be a formal proposal, but we're about to take a vote and I would like to make it in if if at the suggestion or at the acceptance of Robin, because it's her motion, um, to make this one motion to the council for the three moves that we've talked about this morning. Okay, so that Robin can uh, excuse me, Autumn can send that off to the nomination committee. In that regard, as one proposal. Okay. Okay. So, with that in mind, you have no problems so with that change. Yes. Okay. No. Your second still good. Any other discussion? All in favor? And we have one abstention. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. So, my landscape ordinance is going to be easy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Autumn, go ahead. Take right. take it off. So we had our last meeting. We had really good discussion and input from the landscaping ordinance. And this all did we approve the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. I just didn't have it checked off. Okay. Um, the landscape ordinance started out. The conservation commission updated the uh, tree and planting list to be more in line with native species um, and to make sure that we don't allow invasive species. And so that came before you all. And then with that, I am going through the merger of the commercial design standards and then the site plan uh, chapter 405B standards to make them come into one document, capture what we want from both. Uh, and we're doing it piece by piece. So you all are doing landscape right now. And then we're also doing materials, but we'll pick that up with landscape. Uh, it's too much to do right now. And then, for example, sustainability is looking at the lighting standards. And then to keep you really excited and motivated after we finish landscape and architecture, we'll be looking at parking standards. <laughs> Yay. So, <laughs> that's your Christmas present, right? Yeah. So with that said, our last meeting, I gave you a colorful rendition of uh, the standards, the existing, and then green was always proposed sort of fixes, making things more of a, rec instead of a recommendation, a requirement. And so that's, this document is taking your input from there because what I heard from you all that, for instance, we have a requirement right now with 10 to 15% of the parking area has to be landscaped. It's really arbitrary and hard for us to actually measure. Um, but what I heard from the committee was, hey, let's landscape the whole site and let's make it a little more specific. So, in the document, I've added specific language um, that's a little bit more prescriptive and that it's more defined and there's a way to get there and it's easy to say. I've also cleared up some waiver potential. So it's very explicit on what waivers can be asked for from the planning board. So with all that introduction, we'll start going through it. And I suspect we'll have quite a bit of conversation about the specifics. You know, is it one tree per 30 feet? Is it one tree per 40 feet? Um, but we'll get into it. And I have a very um, rudimentary, am I not? Checklist. Why is it not? Are you running the PowerPoint? Nope. It's sharing your screen. It's frozen, maybe. Um, hmm. Try stopping sharing. I, oh, it's paused. So it's just... We just confused the PC with all of the My... discussion about moving to the <laughs> Um, 
So what I'm going to go through are the um, first three sections, and then you all have a paper copy. And so we'll just go through the first sections, purpose, applicability, and general standards. And then we'll move into sort of the meat of it and the standards, and hopefully we'll get through a certain portion of it. And I suspect we'll come back next week to wrap it up. All right, so we're going to start with um, the purpose statement. And just again, to go over it, the blue text is from the commercial design standards that already exist. And then the purple, it's now purple. It's from chapter 405, site plan review. The colorblind member of the committee, thanks for moving from red to purple. <laughs> <laughs> and then the green is proposed. So that's language from our conversations and then uh, language from other ordinances, other places, and then just trying to make us, uh, our goals be met. So the purpose is there um, and the applicability. This has to do with uh, making sure it's for all new replacement and uh, any other landscaping proposed to the site plan process. So if you make a change, you have to meet the new standards. My question on the applicability is really to um, really to the downs. Um, and, and the density, the more dense sections of the town center part of the downs um, and the like might not be, I'm looking also down to the minimum landscape parts of D, I'm kind of reading ahead a bit. Um, but um, do we want an exemption for some sort of master planning process um, or, or something that would involve crossing multiple zoning divisions or crossing uh, or, or, or a site plan that would be, um, what I'm thinking of, within a site plan, we might want to hold the site plan to a minimum of 15 to 20 percent or whatever we go down and look at it. But subsections of the site plan may not be in compliance with that, and that might be okay. Okay, so let's keep it in mind. Yeah, because um, um, I, I think the general idea is if you looked at the downs as a single site plan, it'll, it'll end up being fine with what we're proposing here for overall landscaping. I'm I'm gonna respectfully disagree that I, we have to look at them site plan by site plan, and that's a. Well, and that's we're, what I'm we're getting a lot of issues with waivers for landscaping, like, oh, it's it's 15%, but it's not really. So we really want to, even though their site is very dense, these standards are really very achievable, even for an urban form, because they're going up in numbers. So they still, and it's important that we don't let them increase impervious cover. And it's important. So these standards, uh, they already have maximum impervious cover requirements, 75%. Mm -hmm. So they already have 25% that they have to take care of. So this is just further defining where it has to be because- Again, though, that takes it away from an urban standard that would be, for example, what would be applied in downtown Portland or in downtown Belfast. But like the Downs is respectfully not downtown. <laughs> we and appreciate I, that. Yeah. But what, that's, that's, I just want to be clear that that's what we're saying. We will never have that dense of a district in the square one by the virtue of this plan. I don't, having, I don't think that this is going to- take away their opportunity for density. But I'm, I'm making a different statement. Okay. We're saying that the town will never have an area of town as dense as downtown Portland or, or Belfast or something like that. Like a vegetation okay. desert. Yes. There's no desert. No I, I would say that that is not the desire of the different committees and groups that I'm going to. Okay. Just, like to just, just knowing that we don't want to have just this urban moment with no landscape even no vegetation i'm not getting them but okay. a place we want we'll go to port we'll go to downtown portland when we want that it's okay. and that may change certainly over time mm -hmm. i think where we are right now i'm hearing from the conservation commission and the council that oh. passed a 30 by 30 resolution so there's really a move to take care of what we have and kind of well, 30 by 30 can be accomplished without landscaping on on uh, developed property this time well, um, except tree cover is but a it, significant right. contributor to shade and No, 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 I hear you. But like the 30 by 30 thing can be accomplished by putting lands in trust um, and remaining lands in trust. But you also yeah. have to accomplish, you're going to have to accomplish some sort of open space with each development to mm -hmm. get to that because it's not a. I just, I simply make the observation. Yeah, no, so. I, I, and I understand. I also don't want to us to um, draft an ordinance just for one particular thing because the way the downs is created in the crossroads plan district we can actually if we can adjust that district much easier then we can write all the other ordinances to allow them a certain four so we can go in to the crossroads plan development their zoning district 
and adjust and make changes. And so, and that's where they have some ability right now that's a little different from the rest. So that is um, an easier way to tackle things that won't work for them rather than trying to accommodate. I think that's something we had an issue with in the rate of growth ordinance. It was like trying to work with the downs and the rest of the town where they're two completely different things. And so separating them sometimes has been a much easier way to approach it. But I, I totally hear what you're saying. So I, I'm i mindful of that um, yeah. to make sure that. Rachel? Yeah, um, I, I would say if, with the downs, um, what we hear on the planning board is to begin with a lot of, we can't do that because X, Y, and Z, because we've already done something over here. And when we push back, all of a sudden they figure out how to do it. Um, and um, it's very helpful. All, all of this that's coming up in the landscape is very helpful for the planning board because what we have now is a, we know it when we see it sort of uh, guidance. Um, so I have no problem with the, the requirements and, and the demands in terms of how they affect the downs. What I see is from the downs is the push to put larger buildings and larger parking, uh, larger than the site actually allows or calls for. And then they ask for um, forgiveness mm -hmm. rather than permission. <laughs> These sort of standards are going to create, uh, in terms of the planning board, a great deal of ease in the sense of we can apply them rather than, yeah, well, it doesn't look right. You know, it, it allows us to do that. Um, and from, again, from what I've seen, they sort of finally say, yeah, we can, we can figure it out and they figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just if I could just add my two cents worth here. I, I appreciate your comment and, you know, moving forward from the standpoint of the Downs especially knew exactly what the standards were when they came to us and, and the, the original plan was approved. So we're not making any substantial changes from what was approved originally. So I'm... Yeah, and, um, and I use the Downs, less of the Downs and more as, a, as an example. Um, we were, we're, we're saying, which is fine, and it sounds like that's the message we're hearing, um, that, uh, that, that we don't want Scarborough to have a true urban center that would be, again, effectively a vegetation desert. It would be buildings, sidewalks, and streets, um, which is fine. It's just it's good to be explicit about saying that as we, as we, as we consider this. That's yeah, I mean, everything evolves over time. <laughs> And I'm sure that if the town gets to a point from a growth perspective where people start to feel that that's needed, I'm sure the ordinances will change with the times. Mm -hmm. So I'm not concerned with where things are right now or you know, the direction that we're heading in. Okay. So as need arises, it'll happen. Got it. And very, very generally speaking, Peter, um, without getting into the weeds that you and Otto are proposing and that sort of thing as, as a I mean, even your statement about this decision creates uh, a lack of urban center that you're proposing. I don't disagree with that, but at the same time, that's not at all where I'm coming from. It's There's a standard for Scarborough. And what I hear you saying, even though I'm not putting words in your mouth is, immediately when we start, we start considering the downs again. And I'm nothing against the downs. You have to be very realistic about what Scarborough is and what it's going to become. But I think you're establishing a Scarborough standard and the downs can fit in that very nicely. And if it doesn't, that's too bad. I, first of all, I take a lot of comfort from Rachel saying that these types of standards give the planning board the the tool that they need in having a, a more effective negotiating pers um, uh, perspective with the grounds. Um, as we look back to the comprehensive plan, though, we had sort of um, uh, conceptual visions of what might happen, say, to uh, Oak Hill um, and to, to, to Dunstan or the other sort of um, focused con um, uh, development areas of town. And so we just were saying, okay, we're not going to 
we're going to have a Scarborough standard, which is different. That's fine. It's just going to be like I said. My point is, it's going to be explicit about that, and and make sure that we're being we're not going to have a Belfast or even a Freeport type downtown in in Scarborough. We're going to have a Scarborough type downtown, which this is trying to capture what I think the planning staff and what we're hearing from our constituencies is what we want a Scarborough downtown to be. Um, but it will be different than some of the visions we've talked about or the, that many Mainers have in, in their place when they think of what a town center looks like. So, and I, and I guess to Marvin's point, this is not, this is an overall landscape plan yeah. and it's based on by use. Uh, and it is overall, and that's one of the so reasons it's why. So not I, just for like one, and I don't know if you remember when we go through the architectural standards, we're going to do like the village approach yeah. where we can, we have like a base and then we can further define the village. Maybe there's uh, flat roofs aren't are allowed in Dunstan or Oak Hill and that sort of thing. And so there is potential to come back once we establish this base. Yep. to come back and even, okay, now that we've done um, this village approach with architecture um, and we're going to take a harder look at the specific area, maybe we adjust, we add some specific requirements. We, some places get so particular as to create, we want these types of three street trees. So it's a village. So we could definitely come back and alter it once mm -hmm. we create the base, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so that, that's not lost on that. Th so that doesn't come, that, that, that idea that this is a base that can be then further develop doesn't come through in the document candidly. Well, and that's not my intention, but it's just an idea that I think based on this conversation that it could go very easily. Yeah, that, that, and that would make sense to me. Um, is the, and, build on it. And again, sure. the big concern I had is that none of this was called out by zoning district. This was for essentially anything other than R1, R2, and R3, and, sure. to, and maybe RFC. Um, so when you cover every zoning district, you get into a, especially me thinking from a zoning ZBA perspective, you get into a, there are some challenges about doing everything everywhere, um, which um, I like the idea of what you're talking about, which is this is the base and we will kind of define branches as we as we define um, other things. But um, uh, I, I highlight that, that when, when it covers everything, mm -hmm. you've got a very big stick that you've just applied. So. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, we, we keep talking about uh, the Scarborough Downstown Center. Um, it's really a neighborhood center. All of it's, it's really a neighborhood center. It's a neighborhood the same way that Dunstan Corners is a neighborhood. It's just newer and it's bigger. Um, and it's the commercial part of it is more compact. Uh, and the um, the circle around the town center. Uh, it lends itself to special populations and special needs. Uh, so instead of thinking of it as Belfast, think about it as, as Dunstan and as Oak Hill uh, and as Eight Corners. It's just new, um, but it's meant to be walkable. It's meant to be neighborly. It's meant to be accessible. Uh, and we essentially are designing it from scratch. Uh, we have we have the the joy, I guess, <laughs> of creating something brand new instead of trying to retrofit yeah. some of the standards. Yeah. Uh, Robin? Um, <clears throat> getting into the, the purpose of applicability in general standards, I'm, I'm concerned that these three parts are silent on invasive species. Um, there's nothing saying that. Oh, oh there, there is. There is on page two at the top. It's the uh, oh, native. It's, green. it's a native, yeah. So you want to add like invasive. We yeah. talk about invasive species later, but that's a good point you, to bring it up high. But yeah, first, like yeah. have it up there. With, yeah. And invasive is different than native. Yes. Oh, I know that. I know. Actually, what <laughs> invasive species. Yeah, I'll, I'll add something. Um, that's good. I have one other thing, and Peter, I, it's not that I'm missing some of the things <laughs> that you're saying at all. It's again in the weeds. Yeah, I'm. I can't speak to that intellectually, you know, or confidently, but I, I do want to make sure I understand. I think this does provide a good base. Scarborough Live. Uh, and 
or at least a base, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, are you saying it does not? Did I hear that? No, I think what I'd say differently is this is more of less of a base and more of a complete townwide standard. Where I think of a base, I think of a set of principles that then would allow for different subsections to build off of those principles. So it's it, on some level, it's going to be a document construction issue. Um, but on another level, I, I don't disagree that this is a good overall um, framework for what Scarborough's the landscape design standard should be. Um, but what I, but to me, it reads like this is the only framework for Scarborough's design standards, not for something that, that can be then adapted by neighborhood or by area. Can I propose something to do that? Yeah, sure. Can I propose that you look at it as um, <clears throat> sort of like a commonality that laces all the neighborhoods together or that the, the, the tie that binds or that a cohesive thread that weaves it all together? Do we want that though? Because for example, do we want Scarborough down Teens Beach to feel woven together with Oak Hill? Well, you can allow Higgins Beach or any of the other neighborhoods to sort of do their own placemaking still, but have these as the framework consistency yes thank you i would propose then <clears throat> pardon me either applicability or general standards that we call out the idea that this is not meant to to um homogenize it's a minimum standard yeah well this is not meant to homogenize or to remove the individual characters of those parts of town which have developed a cons uh, an internal consistency um okay. but it is meant to uh, because i i, I hear you in, in, in the sense of um I like the idea of what you're saying in, in the sense of this is a document that creates sort of the, the fabric. The fabric, yeah. This and, and then we build up uh, on the fabric. Um, um those parts of town that already have their own well-developed fabric, though, we're not here to remove the foundation that they've already built. Yeah, but I don't I, in this particular document, I don't think we need to state it as that. I would disagree because we have a lot of alls, we have a lot of the entire. Um, so no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll respectfully disagree. I think we, the, the, as I read this as somebody who would deal, who not from a planning perspective, but might deal with how this would affect the zoning code, this doesn't allow wiggle room for differences between different zoning areas. So that, that's my concern. So it, it's funny that you say that. So there was another way for minimum landscaping required that I actually started out creating it for, and it was based on the impervious cover that's required for zoning district. Our zoning ordinance is really inconsistent. Yep. And some have higher and some have lower. So, and then we have an R2 district, a residential district right. allows commercial uses. Right. So then after a lot of, I thought, okay, no, I'm going to make it simpler and easier because our minimum um, is 15% that you have to have for pervious cover in our zoning district. And so that was the minimum 15% is what I chose to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I've administered. A code really similar like this, and then uh, in several places, it's a pretty basic way to do it. Um, and so that's why I went that way because our zoning districts are a hot mess. Of yeah, they are. And, 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 like, and, some and that's kind of why it's just from yeah, it, it, yeah. It, they, they are. And by having a document like this come on top of that, yes, you, you, you homogenize that, but you also take away any logic that was built into the, 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 the original zoning hot mess of made. But for instance, in it's the it's TBC it's three district, the impervious maximum is much greater than eighty five percent. So it's okay, is what I'm trying to say. Is this is not making it's not taking any developable land away. It's just saying, and we already have these standards in place. Mm -hmm. They're just not defined. So it's the planning board trying to come up with what that really means. So we already have this fifteen percent requirement for parking. So we already have islands, and we already have trees. And we already have um, streetscape buffers, mm -hmm. and those are captured in here per zoning district. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to see them because they vary. Like Route One has three mm -hmm. different standards in the zoning district, so putting all of your landscaping together makes it a lot cleaner and easier, I think, to administer it. And that's what yeah, we have to do. And then for yeah. the planning board to make those. But that's why I went with this understanding that this was a minimum, and I wasn't hurting or taking away any developable land from the zoning district. So okay. I think, I think, I I know the, I've tried it both approaches and this was a lot easier 
and cleaner because we have so many uses allowed in so many districts. The, um, which makes sense. Um, and and I, I appreciate where you're coming from on that one. What I'd say then to make um, the, the post hoc zoning board issue easier, when we get this done, could we go through some sort of an analysis process on the zoning code mm -hmm. so that we know, because that's what we look to for approving exceptions or approving or, approving or denying appeals. We don't look to, we wouldn't look to this document normally. No, so. and I don't know, um, I don't know why landscaping would come before you from the zoning board of adjustment. Uh, well, it, why you there, would... there's, there's more than, what would come before us, for example, is buffers. Um, buffers end up kind of, kind of flowing there. Well, not the composition of the buffer. Land zoning. Yeah, land yeah, yeah, land exactly. That, so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but that is a separate issue. And so that supersedes anything else. So that's like the top. And this is, so I don't think, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it. Yeah, if we could, your... I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments in this area? I was going to, you, you look like you wanted to say something, right? I think we should try to move on. Move on, yeah, okay. I would agree. Not even our part A, so I'm sure that Autumn has some plan to try to get through this. I'm fine with that. Okay. So on the screen, I think you all can see it pretty well. Can we make that bigger, Eric? Can you make your... Uh, well, you can um, do your full screen. Uh, The lower right hand, it looks like a little. If you go to slide channel. Well, no, I'm just trying to take a ball and screen up there. This one's different. Like, it's okay. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. If you hit the screen in the bottom row, I yeah. think that'll do it. Lower right yeah. hand corner. Lower, lower right hand corner. corner. Oh, yeah, you can't wow. see it on your screen. I can't see what you can see. Sorry. Here, I'll point we're waiting on technical. <laughs> While we're waiting on technical difficulties, I I do think the conversation the group was having was critical yeah. as far as forming it and time well, Rick, not to disagree with you, but time well spent to. No, you get the wrong one. Um, I still can't find it. Sorry, I have other things on my screen. Then, you see the slider bar there? Right next to the slider bar, to the left of it. Right there. There you go. Yeah, I got it. I just already tried that. It's okay. We'll just keep going. Um, so anyway, I put together this pretty crude little one acre site, right? And it's um, an example site. And I just wanted to go through. So whenever I write these, I try to make sure they actually make sense. <laughs> like I didn't do something strange that that's actually not possible that you're prohibiting somebody from developing on. So I took a one acre just square uh, and applied. It's a it's a retail site. So the minimum landscaping required in section D, I have it defined right now at the 20% for multifamily and then 15 for commercial retail and lodging. And again, that, that matches those districts. Um, Pervious cover requirement. And would then you need, would you need another street entryway? No, we don't no. actually like two street entryways. Gotcha. So we actually want one. <laughs> no, I'm thinking just from fire code, do we have that? Or the fire, or? yeah, no. Um, okay. Got it. This is just a one acre site. Too, yep. So that's pretty small. So, norm, what we're actually trying to get to, Peter, is where we have shared access opportunities. Gotcha. Yep. And so we're yep. trying to get to that'll be in the yep. uh, next iteration of. Like yeah, we, we don't want a lot of one acre standalone. Mm -mm. This is not our yeah. yeah. So in this, uh, the minimum landscape required is just your base. And so this is sort of your starting point. Uh, it's 15% and then the one tree per 500 square feet and then um, two shrubs per 500 square feet. And so that logic is based on how the trees typically develop out and the space that you need. And it's just a really uh, good starting point. So this site needs 13 trees and 26 shrubs. So at a bare minimum, that's what you're gonna get on the site. So that's your, your bucket you're trying to fill. And then the next is the buffer yard standard. And the buffer yards, um, I actually gathered all of these from our current zoning districts and I included them in the red line so you could see them. 
uh, but we have different districts require different front yard buffers for different streets. So there'll be like Payne Road, 15 feet, Gore Road, 15 feet, all others. And so then that continues and all of the purple is actually from our current zoning districts, but tried to put it in one landscaping place because you don't even realize that you have two different standards until you see it all together. Um, and so the only other one that's new on this one is the all other districts. Route one is 15 feet defined. And then I added a 10 feet because that seemed consistent for the, from the other districts. Just visually, is this a 15 foot buffer or a 10 foot buffer right here? This one is a 10 foot ten buffer. Foot. Yeah, so where the arrow is pointing, that's what that strip is, what it's called. And so the buffer strip, there's quite a bit of purple and some blue text in there. And then there's a little bit of green and these are some decision points. So we could require street trees. Street trees are talked about a lot in the commercial design standards and in other places, but they're actually not required or called out how at what rate they need to be. So we could include language that you have to have a street tree at a rate of one per 30 feet, or the planning board could require a street tree um, at one per 30. So what I've shown on this is the one per 30 feet, this site would need seven trees in that streetscape buffer. So you have the seven green, dark green circles. Those are your trees. And those are counted against your minimum requirement. So you start out with the minimum, 13 trees required and you subtract. So it's, a, it's taking away, it's not cumulative, it's not adding each requirement based on your site takes away from that. Okay. So for example, if we said um, the planning board may require buffer trees, but they only were, but for this one, they only put four, you'd still need to put three trees elsewhere on the property to get to the, right. the total. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just want to understand that. So it just depends on, you know, if you want to be more specific or if you want to allow some flexibility on that, that's an option. Rachel, is the flexibility better or do you want the requirement? I, I think, I, I, what the requirement um, I, I'm trying to decide if, if we want a waiver option mm -hmm. and um, I tend to I can think of one case where where we were found a way to waive and still get the coverage um, so I like I like the standards. I uh, and usually, actually, always a waiver of uh, the burden of proof is on the applicant, uh, and we're hold, holding them to that burden of proof. Now, some of it sounds awfully formulaic when they give it to us, um, but if that's the case, then this idea that the planning board may require gives you this stick that you yes. need. In other words, it gives us the the minimum that we can say, "Sorry, we just required it." Yeah. I, I, I would de we deal with a lot of developers who think once they hit the minimum standards, they don't have to do anything else. Um, and <laughs> we need the the ability to say, yes, well, the minimum is nice, but we also need right. this because on this particular site, we need more. So, do you want the minimum at the one per thirty or? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we'll keep we'll keep thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, that no, I, I think it, yeah. Or do you want the minimum of one per twenty, or may require at the word of one per twenty, which means that you may require one per thirty, but you couldn't require one per ten. Right. That works. Yeah. So you again, would... again anything that gets us away from in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Um, because then we all have different definitions, for instance, about what robust landscaping means. <laughs> so one, I, I didn't catch that, but 20 feet is probably too close for large street trees to achieve mm -hmm. their total growth. Yeah, no, I, I was throwing that out there. Okay, so, okay. so let's do the 30. Yeah. Okay. May, may require. Okay. Can you can include a waiver mm -hmm. sentence that says if street trees at one per 30 cannot be achieved to X, Y, Z, then you know, if you do X, Y, Z, it's trying to give them some like what they have to do to get a waiver. So yeah, I don't think we, we run into issues of utilities mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and the telephone poles and the electric poles and buried utilities. Oh, and all of a sudden they're trying to put in trees. 
here because this is the only place they can yeah, do it and yeah. avoid yeah. utilities, but they can't put it here. So um, we need the ability to say, yeah, this site essentially dictates that you cannot really put the the one for thirty. Okay, uh, like we've we've had that on a couple of occasions along the one. Yeah. Okay, that and I have no view, and I just want to make sure yeah. the planning board has both the, yeah. the stick and the flexibility yeah. that they want to have. Yeah, that's good. And then um, I like your idea, Peter, of like planting them somewhere else. Yeah. And then yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Don't give them too much flexibility. Right. <laughs> no, give, give, give us a, they, uh, something to the effects so of uh, they still need to plant the trees. It's just maybe not the one for 30 obviously, along the street. Obviously, if the utilities won't permit it, then they can't do it. Right. Uh, however, they could sacrifice some other area or uh, if we're talking about mm. beginning planning, well, then you can't do this over there. Take another site. I mean, I don't see that anyway. I've already said it. I do not see the benefit of giving it, giving, creating too many exceptions in the rule. I Sometimes think greater forces are in play. Like when CMP says the right of way will go here, or when Portland Water District says you will have at least 10 feet away from the water mm -hmm. main on each side, you can't put that tree there. I understand. But, that. I, but I think what, what I'd like to propose is, well, that tree's going to go somewhere else. It's yeah. still going to stay there. They'll have, have, the same, have the same yeah. number of trees. Yep. Yeah. But we have yep. the flexibility so, of and, where. And if like the trees can't be proposed, if they can't be planted, you can do shrubs. Right. So we can do some compromise sort of exactly. language like that. You don't just get to get away with it, maybe. So that's... Amber, I, I, I'd like to, or and Mr. Chair, I'd like to just ask a question about um, right underneath the table, thank you for bringing it to our attention that there are different, mm -hmm. you know, setbacks and different zones. The buffer yard shall be maintained as naturally vegetated area with native, not where, where it's adjacent. Oh, where, okay, yes. where it's yeah, yeah. water bodies, wetlands. Okay. So I guess what I'm saying is what I want to get to is uh, on buffer yards and the buffers and things, everybody wants to make the mound burn. You know <laughs> what I mean? And that is that is uh, not allowing any infiltration of right, right. any kind of stormwater whatsoever. So I guess what I'm wondering is, is that burn required in certain areas, you know, along Route 1 or whatever? Because those drive me crazy. It only comes up when it's part of like your parking lot screening. Oh. Yeah. There's a section, and this is a, a holdover statement, this purple, where it's adjacent. I don't think, I don't think that the buffer yard against a street's ever gonna also be adjacent to a water body. So it's kind of a weird holdover to me. Yep. Um couldn't, I, I couldn't the screening I'm, be shrubbery of some kind? Well, so this is just let's just get I'm gonna get through all these and then yep. I think okay um I'd like to we'll answer the question but let me keep going through this and then because they're different things yeah right so a lot of our existing ordinances mix things yep. and I'm trying to keep them really this is this and this is this yep. and so let's keep going and then um see where we get to so this next so now we've got the minimum still so this site one acre site 13 trees 26 shrubs the buffer yard, if we keep the one tree for 30, they have seven trees required. So 13 minus seven trees. So doing good. The next requirement is residential adjacency. This particular site, for my example, doesn't have residential adjacency. But if we did have residential adjacency, I've put standards in here um, that if you're a non-residential use adjacent to single family or zoning district, you'd have to put 15 feet in between yourself, your property, your parking, and your stuff, landscape, 15 feet. And then if you're adjacent to multifamily, 10 feet. These are just starting points. Those may be too small, they may be too big, you may not care. But the ordinance speaks to residential adjacency, but it doesn't define it anywhere. So I've put those standards in as a starting point. So say for instance, this site had residential adjacency back here um, at the back of it. This is actually your parking lot strip, this would have to be greater. So it would, the green space would come in. So they would have to do some site configuration. I will also, and this is some planning nerdy stuff, but I will also say that the way this is written is from the outside in. Because what we see a lot, people go, oh, I need to do this building. 
make it work on the site. So, and we see that a lot in planning boards too, where the building's just too yeah. darn big for the site, right? So it's written and it's, it just makes me happy, but it's written so you have to work your way in and what you have left is what you can actually build on the site. And so that's just, I just want to put that out there. The one comment I make, and it rather relates to what you were saying about the, the berms, um, it's come up on a number of things on, on, on zoning. Um, we're going to make this the, the the responsibility of the non-residential units rather than the yes. residential site. I think we need to, to include something about um, drainage not impacting the residential site or any drainage impacts um, being focused on the non-residential site. Because we see where drainage, where, where structures are created and then drainage rolls onto the residential property or rolls onto the neighboring property, and that creates issues. Well, so you shouldn't see that. So that's in our stormwater ordinances, and that should never occur. Okay, but if that's covered in different sections. Yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. Um, as as long as that's in there, yeah. that that might speak then, Robin, to your concern about the berming. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And to put it out there too, we're going to have a low impact development ordinance creation in the next year, and that's going to probably do okay. away with berms. Okay. I'm good with that. Too. But yeah, we have that covered. Yeah. If I could uh, put in a word for expanding actually the buffer. Um, <laughs> on the multifamily against the residential. We've had, we have a problem that came up when we were dealing with the Avesta housing uh, and the effect of the Avesta housing um, at the fire engine uh, development um, with the neighborhood. And it, it ended up with screening between the Avesta and the neighbors but it's a it's a screening that's um, spruce. That's basically, and what's going to happen is the people in Avesta are going to be looking out at trees right up close to them mm -hmm. in the back, and the people in the housing are going to look at trees right up close to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems to me that uh, there should be an additional maybe five feet. Okay, so between multifamily and residential, yeah, multifamily. Um, to Five feet to allow the to allow people actually to look out their windows. So okay, that's basically, okay. what it is, and, and see something other than pine tree right, you know, right, right at the window. Gotcha. Uh, as it starts, as it starts to grow. Um, is this specifically for um, mixed use, or is it for all multi for multi multifamily? Well, currently, the I think the proposal is multifamily. It's for multifamily, but again, so waiver applic there's a waiver at the end for uh, mixed use districts and stuff. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of curious, was the complaint coming from the investor side or from the, the single family side? It was um, it was a subject of a lot of discussion and negotiation sort of at the planning board between the neighbors who were pretty irate with a four story building right next to their bedroom windows. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, a best of saying it didn't have enough. It it didn't have enough space uh, to do a larger a larger uh, buffer mm -hmm. in order to get enough parking spaces. And of course, <laughs> right. yeah. 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 you know, it was yeah. it, it's a constant balance and and back and forth to get get it to work as close as it can mm -hmm. under our current ordinances. Because this is where one of those, those areas where in the high growth, the designated high growth areas in town, um, maybe we make a distinction. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that that the buffers are smaller in the high, designated high growth areas, and they they would be larger in the non high growth areas. Oh, well, no. what? the, the, what's your thinking? Why? Um, because high growth, the the more buffers you put in high growth areas, the more land you're taking away from being able to have have high density growth in those areas. So. Well, um, Perhaps, you know, yeah. I mean, you're talking about square feet. I get, I get that. Now, generally speaking, if you're attempting to create buffers, uh, I mean, I come at this slightly differently. I, in so far, and I sort of my two cents. I want to say that uh, in reviewing the older documents, and just my general impression is that Scarborough has been so rural for so long that the rules so to speak were not even almost not applicable because there's and so now that the density mm -hmm. is uh definitely increasing and the 
tone of the town is shifting. I think uh, beefing up these uh, buffers is probably is probably a good idea as opposed to relying on the rural character of the town to take care of itself anyway. No, and, 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 and part of the what's 15 feet? In other words, Eric, is there this table you... is like six feet. So so in other words, the buffer Drake's phone. The buffer would be from here to and that's phone. just an that's extra space. About between where the parking lot curb would be for a multifamily building that could be four stories high. Yeah. And so that's what we're talking about. Well, so six, John's, well, six, yeah. 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 All right, do you want to comment before you leave, John? Yeah. Any comments? Well, so if you don't tell people what you want, there's a very little chance that you're going to get it. I think where you're tracking is creating clarity around what we want in Scarborough. And it's not going to be a subjective and that's okay because then you, you'll learn from that experience. Mm -hmm. If you get it wrong a little bit, you can correct it. Um, but somebody who is coming in to develop it, it creates some clarity for what they need to do. And I think your example with the firehouse, you know, that's a site that already had a building on it. So they had constraints that a, a vacant site might not have. And mm -hmm. maybe that's a consideration somewhere. But, uh, you know, if you have a, a clean slate, coming up with 20% landscaping is not. Yeah. You should be able to accomplish that. If you've got a couple buildings stuck in there already, that can be big accomplished. I have to run to another meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Marvin, maybe to speak to your comment, I, I don't disagree with you. I, um, I'm just thinking of one of the ways the town has already communicated differentiation between the areas that we will continue to keep rural and the areas that we will allow to have greater development is this idea of high growth and the non high growth areas of town. So I'm thinking of just P backing off of that for the purposes of buffers in this document and and, I, and where I'm coming from is I think these are men, you know, on the very minimal side to begin with when you're in a rural setting. And I don't think there's been any issue as you transition into a more urban setting. I think you want to at least, you know, hold the barricade where it is. And I would say when it's 10 feet, you make it 15, yeah. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's, that's about everything I have to say almost. Okay. Okay. So let's keep going with this. The next one. Now we're into uh, the parking lot section. So parking lot landscaping required. And this, if you looked at your markups, this is where you saw in the site plan ordinance the ten percent and the fifteen percent were not carried over. Um, did it a different way. So we used the parking lot screening idea, and then added some clarity on how to do it. Um, so, and then I'm going to talk about, let's see, I guess I talk about uh, parking lot islands first. The parking lot screening for this one. Oh my gosh, I forgot some dots on my plan. I'm, I apologize. So I'm going to talk to you about parking lot screening. So that is actually going to be in this area. Oh, that's why this plan doesn't have it because they did it right. Because there's no parking in the front, right? There's no parking out here. This is what our ordinances actually ask for. Um, and so they don't have to add that three foot tall screen because they didn't park in front. So if they did, they would have to add a three foot continuous screen. And that's where you can achieve it with the berm or fence or the shrubbery. And that um, is in green for that part. I'm with Rob. I'm with Rob. I hate the berm too. The um, berm. So I, I, if we can not have the berm, I'd love it. But I'll for others. Yeah. I'm good with that. Um, as a recommendation. So now I'm going to talk to you about islands. So this particular site, they have um, 40 spaces are required for their retail use. And they, so they have to do three islands because they have to do one per 15. And that requires three trees and 12 shrubs. So now they have 13 trees minimum, minus seven, minus three trees. So they're still building against that. So these three islands are required and they can space them. There's some flexibility. Um, How no big are these islands? They're nine by 18, nine by same eight. size yeah. as a parking lot, a uh, parking space. Gotcha. Um, and then the tree and the shrubs. Yeah. And then we go into um, the entryway. This is an additional, um, just to make the entryway a little bit more. And we see this on most site plans anyway but to have two large trees and then four shrubs on each side. 
they can double count because they already have their street tree, so that's okay. Um, so they just have to do the eight additional shrubs. A large tree, by definition, is a street tree. A street tree may not be a large tree. Is that right? No, no. I don't, so, a, I'm just thinking. A large like, tree like a, is it's defined in our tree species. But like so, you could have a street tree, which is not a large tree. You no. You can um, okay. They're not specified. You can, but they're yeah. not called out as okay. different. You I'm can look at just a square rectangle sort of the relationship. Like you, you, yeah, yeah. It's kind of what. I just wondered. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, so again, just can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, so like we're in section G, parking lot landscape uh -huh. require first paragraph of um, beating the scrum. Why that thing goes at the end of it? Does it say, I mean, if it says groupings or clusters of trees shall be preserved in parking areas, and then it says, except where the planning board determines, why would why would you write in that exception? This one um, actually came out of our conversation last time, I think, um, that if there's an existing natural grouping, they shall be preserved unless... Yes, yeah, so in other words, the, the, only, the planning board has the right to, to get granted exemption. To not preserve them all. But no, I understand yeah. that, but... If, my question is why? I mean, if you want to preserve uh, mm -hmm. groupings of clusters, you know, existing groupings of clusters of trees, you want to preserve them. I'm, I mean, that's, I'm not. I'm uh, not yeah. It's usually very difficult um, because a cluster of trees will take up a lot of extra space because you have to actually ask the developer almost to fence them off or to curb them. Um, they create a difficult traffic flow. Um, we had, we, we've got a problem right now with a parking, temporary parking lot application um, where they want to preserve the larger trees. Well, to preserve those trees in the parking lot, you have to protect them from damage. Otherwise, you're going to lose them pretty fast because every people are going to back into them. People are going to scrape them. They're going to lose bark. Um, if you want to preserve them, all of a sudden, instead of taking up two parking spaces, you're taking up three or four parking spaces, depending on the size of the tree or the size of the, uh, the, the cluster. And, and at some point, I think you have to be realistic about what you're preserving. Usually a cluster of trees that I've seen will not have any specimen trees in it. I mean, basically, if all of a sudden there was a rare tree or a specimen tree in there, then I'd like the ability to consider <clears throat> forcing them to keep it. And, and I'm, I'm with you, Rachel, I understand what you're saying, but I'm wondering, are they going to identify this as part of their site inventory and analysis? Do they report to you, you know, planning staff on this? Because otherwise, it's really hard to even know that there is a natural grouping of trees there because they've had their contractor come and stump mm -hmm. and grub everything already and it's gone. Yeah, the um, there's, a, there's a section on specimen trees, which originally I think was 23 inches in yeah. diameter, and we I don't couldn't find any definition. Yeah, well, it's 23 inches in diameter. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and a wolf pine can be 23 inches in diameter. Is that really a specimen tree that we want to keep? Um, I guess we've had it. Yeah, you're you're right. Um, what frequently happens. Uh, uh, is that a developer will not apply for anything, but will go in and get a permit to harvest trees and we'll cut them all down. And then we'll get a permit or then come before the planning board on a site that effectively has already been cleared and legally cleared. Um, so we don't know what's, what's on the site. A and I don't see how how we can enforce leaving up clumps of trees if they haven't actually applied for a site plan or a sketch plan. We would have to come at it. There, There is some language in here that I added 
that if you're proposing to preserve trees, how to do it and what's required for the tree survey and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But we would have to come at, if we wanted to make it completely required, we'd have to come at it and actually require tree preservation, right? And that's a different ordinance. And, and so I added some, if you do it, this is how you have to do it. But it, this language is to give some flexibility. So I, I just can't imagine the developer coming and saying that uh, preserving the trees is practical. Exactly. So I just, sure. you either don't put the first part of the sentence in and leave a, you know, and say you have to do something or you leave out this exception. And I'm, I'm very in favor of, uh, as you know, uh, preserving existing national sure. improvements. And uh, you could, if you wanted to, I mean, except in the rare occasion where the planning board determined, I mean, to give the planning board a little bit of wiggle room, there's no wiggle room in this. It's just the developer says it's in progress. Let's talk about where trees are really needed the most, which is in that naturally vegetative area, that mm -hmm. buffer between, you know, natural resources, whether it's a wetland or a stream or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd rather see us get a little more, get a little more um, possessive of those buffers. Mm -hmm. And give up this trying to claim natural tree groupings in a parking lot kind of a thing, which doesn't make any sense. I'd rather have us take that sort of passion for the trees and put it where it's needed, which is in the those natural yeah. buffers. And perhaps take a look at something that says where a uh, buffer area contains uh, trees, specimen trees, or um, a natural grouping that is attractive. You know, again, it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, it shall be preserved, uh, at which may mean that the buffer is a little wider than yeah. than we thought, or, or than the, the developer thought. So I don't, I don't know how that can be written. I, but I, I agree that it's in the buffer areas that we might want to preserve, and the buffer areas simply do not have to be straight lines. So I'm going to do a couple of things. This is what I propose. I propose I strike the existing natural groupings of trees. I am also working on the stream buffer ordinance for conservation. And I'll take this yeah. and make it feed into that conversation too. I think, yeah. I think that yeah. is one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we in our design standards talk about uh, clusters of trees in buffering, particularly along the street in our last meeting? Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't know how that applies, but I just have a strong remembrance of, of looking at natural. We did. And then we added some ability. The green was the ability to add some waivers if it didn't work out. Okay. <laughs> so it uh, seems like now we're like, eh, it's probably not going to be practical. And maybe that's not a battle. And, and, is, as you kind of review the wetlands, as I mentioned, the wetland boundaries, would that include a review of the shoreland boundaries as well? There's a lot. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Can we have the notes reflect that? That what we're talking about is we're willing to give up sure some of the yeah. natural groupings of tree requirements in favor of some more rigorous buffers, tree buffer, natural resource buffer standards. Or grouping the cluster trees and parking lots. Yeah, we're yeah. willing to not yeah. Yeah. worry about yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. You know, as we're talking about this, I did make one note and I can't find the exact spots of reference, but it's in this section G. In one place, I wrote down that I saw that there was a requirement of the parking lot islands or the buffering islands for every 15 spaces. Mm -hmm. And in another space, another spot in this document, I saw it was every 10. That's by design. So you're required to do an island every 15 spaces, but no more than 10 spaces cannot have one. So, um, so you had it's to give spaces, you some you flexibility. That you had spaces, it's yeah. a mix and match. Yeah. So it's not every 10 uh, spaces. You have, to, you have to have some, but you can also count the entryway islands. And so it's just okay. a little that you don't have to have that many, but you have to really think about where they are. All right. So I just, yeah, yeah. The way I was reading it, it looked like there was a two different, two different you. things. It's so I just give some flexibility. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. And so now we've got, we've talked about uh, the parking lot islands and the entryways. And now we're talking about the vehicular use area. 
So I'm still on parking lot landscaping. I'm at the last bullet. Vehicular use areas, including um, drive aisles and or parking space shall be screened from all budding private property by a continuous landscaped area not less than five feet. So that's what this green strip is around. Mm -hmm. And we we have we see this a lot even with like wetlands. We have to require a five foot area just so if you say you're going to build a fence, we it's not written in our standards that there's a five foot area between the the buffer. So this this is needed, I think, um, to really create some separation between sites um, and to it's allow five feet standard is coming really. It's low. Those. It's slow. I mean, can it's, I get 10 feet? It's up to you guys. I'm open for I started at some very low standards. <laughs> to, um, and I think I, I can, uh, I'm inclined to agree with Martin. Can we, can we look at 10? And um, it would look weird on this one acre lot as we talked about. This one acre mm -hmm. lot is, becomes weird the more you, you, know, you work on it. Yeah. So uh, or from a visual perspective anyway. But I think you're right. I think the 10 feet kind of makes more five feet I just think it's we're in a we're in a <laughs> yeah. know, rural tradition and somehow even in the most urban area if you can push it that way mm -hmm. um, I think well you know what it does what though so this is only where you have parking right so if you design your site smart and you don't have parking in the back it's okay. not required it's not an issue I mean it's obviously it's not going to it could be uh, it's not going to be impervious so it's going to be landscaped anyway right. but it's kind of like trying to get you to it's design a, your site a little think yeah. about it yeah it's another bonus yeah you have to put the parking in the rear right to use your to setbacks use. put your building in certain places so mm -hmm. you guys would like to see this at least 10. a lot of minus <laughs> moment uh -huh. yeah. private stuff did you say that intention private property um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. Municipal property. Yeah, it's interesting property. because Other, you can yeah, put yeah. less of all meeting except for this part. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Yeah, and I, okay. Thanks, for the rest of the team. And so I don't have any requirements for plantings in this area. It's we just. Uh, yes. It's yes. just a landscape pervious area. Do you want that? So you. Amber, can we just can we just talk about the grading of it? Um, because what I'm seeing is somebody's just going to put a curb stop or something in there, and so <clears throat> I I get that we're going to have a visual buffer, uh -huh. but I I just hate for us putting all these raised vegetation areas everywhere that are really they're not infiltrating anything. Like if we're going to put these these strips in uh -huh. do we do we want them to like serve well they're going to have to right them? for the yeah, lid exactly. so as i'm writing this i'm thinking oh i'm reading the lid standards too like okay this is an opportunity for them to use this for infiltration right. when we require this the grade too, or and so I think that is appropriate in the LID stormwater section. What okay. is LID? Exactly? So it's low impact design. Right. And so part of our MS4 permit requirement, we have to put into place by July and one of next year, low impact design standards. And that has to do with how, they, I am not an expert. <laughs> I'm just repeating what Angela is telling me. So it has to do with how much of an area you can drain. It's trying to reduce piping for stormwater. It's trying to do it on site at the source. Uh, the filtration permeable right yeah, and so it's really and so this is timely right let's increase yeah. what we have as green space because we're going to have to do that 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 urban form won't be able to happen once that's in place right. anyway that's so if you curb and gutter everything yeah. you're not doing well you're not doing it. you have to you're doing it. traditional development i do have uh, alan my, my interesting comment on that i will often argue for denser buildings I will not offer um, argue for denser parking lots. Um, so I think the idea of putting more green space buffers between parking lots, between parking lots and lines, um, makes a lot of sense. Even though I'd still like to see buildings um, fill in with one another and create a more um, a continuous built environment feel for urban areas. Okay. So, but my question in regard to the the, the LID <laughs> issue is: is there? I'll, for lack of a better word, effective uh, parking area that would 
could be used in an LID situation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that you could cover that requirement by going to a different parking field and just putting pavement in. Is that? You could do pervious pavement. But I also, I will say that I added a waiver in uh, that the planning board may waive. Res um, Where are you? Oh, here we go. I'm on the page 16. I'm just trying to tell you guys, uh, the planning board may approve an alternative interior parking island design to address stormwater runoff if recommended for approval by the town engineer. So I added some clarity knowing that we're gonna get to this point to address some of those issues. Um, so we're definitely, I'm, my point is we're not doing this in a silo. So I, I'm trying to make sure I'm not doing something bad for a future ordinance and having to undo. Uh, so we're gonna increase this to, 10 feet minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we say at least? At least. Okay. So in that, on that so, paragraph, <laughs> O or Z, yeah, it would be O. I'm sorry. On on paragraph O, o. that you were just referencing about. Um, oh, for waivers? For, for waivers. Uh -huh. I, one of the things I also don't want to necessarily do is put a lot of what might be considered some unnecessary burdens on the planning board. Mm -hmm. And my question in regard to that issue was, should that be something that is actually covered by town peer review people and, and then having them give an advisory opinion somehow to the planning board. For which one? For this this paragraph, this paragraph O, talking about the entirety of the waivers. Right. Yeah, the waivers. Well, I, I, I'm so, just wondering yeah. if I agree if with peer that. review should get involved here and take that. I don't have peer bonus. reviewers for landscaping, but I do have peer reviewers for traffic and drainage and stormwater. But, but, but the planning board can ask the, for a peer review. Yeah, they can. And that's in here too. They can ask for a landscape peer review. All right. I, to get a contract. You know, we get to a point mm -hmm. where I, I know the work that goes into being mm -hmm. on the planning board. And we we approach areas that we really don't have the expertise in necessarily mm -hmm. that might be needed to be able to provide some of these waivers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just or deny them. Or, or, or deny them, which is where I'm coming. From. Right. And, so and, and I, I'm just wondering I think that makes sense. We, and and we realize, have something with some meat in it. Realizing that we're not requiring peer review for everything. It's only when a waiver is requested that we're we're requiring peer review. Is what what you say? Well, yeah, kind of, sort of, but not totally. Yeah, you know, right. there, there are some specific areas of expertise where yeah. um, the peer review is way in or has to weigh in, and where Angela is asked right. to weigh in, especially. Right. Um, and sometimes her comments are uh, combined with into the staff, the memos from the staff right. that the planning board gets. And sometimes she also... Uh, is an additional presenter on the town's behalf at a planning board meeting. Um, and we certainly have no problem looking at her and saying, Angela, um, <laughs> do you have, in other words, do you have a comment to, to help us? Because yeah. clearly um, I'm not an expert in it. And I don't think I really have got maybe one person now on the planning board who, who is. Um, or who has more expertise in that area. So we always have the option of asking. Uh, and um, routinely, I have a conference call with the planning staff on Monday afternoon sure. before the meeting. Understood. And that's also a point where I'll <laughs> say, you know, I'm confused about this. Yeah. We, need, we need more from yeah. Somebody or need more from Angela, or could you check this or could you look at that? Generally speaking, I don't mean to interrupt you. Waivers should be really exceptional and, and not written in. Like the developer is going to look to this waiver immediately and see if he can get or she can get what she wants. And if you have that backed up with neutral party staff and it isn't a 
board decision, so to speak. I, I just think beefing up uh, the difficulty of having a way having a waiver is important. Yeah, and that's it's, what I. And, and we and we really need to clearly state that the burden of proof is on the applicant. Um, and we. Yeah, well, I just think these waivers. You need waivers, obviously. But they should be, you should design this entire document to such a degree that they don't happen very often. Right. And then that, that's the goal is to create these standards and then these weird one off situations. And then let's talk about waivers next time. But, and I'll add some more, like number five for snow storage. It's like you can do this requirement if you do all of these things. Right. And so that's the right. idea is that you have to do all these things to get a waiver. Like we've already defined how the waiver would work. And so you can't just say, I don't want to do it. It doesn't I, work. I only bring it up because I feel like as we've been going down through this, we've uh -huh. been putting more responsibility on the planning board yeah. several times. And I just, but their well, job is difficult enough. So I'm trying to. See you all. Kind of all of it, right? You guys already have so much. We're actually reducing. We're skinning yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 Just like. Because now we have the conversation, Eric and I, can we ask for a waiver for that? I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, you can. Uh, you but know, it's really vague. Put, okay. put in a, a, could you check for me? And that's under an 05, the store, snow storage. It says, snow shall be hauled to approved and permitted locations. Uh, the planning board needs to know that that's been approved, you know, what, what those are. Okay. So you're going to need to, you have to show a list where yes um and to be able to tell the planning board that yeah. the proposal goes to a permitted or approved okay. location okay yeah, I, I would just strike the waiver altogether okay. so i'm going to go back to my little site and we're talking about foundation foundation landscaping really quick uh, so now again, still, are you again? Are I am on six. H, page six. Thank you. So now we're talking about foundation landscaping requirements. Um, and so planting beds on the second paragraph are now required along proposed building edges, foundations, and uninterrupted walls. We have a requirement now that all paved surfaces of the parking areas shall be separated from buildings by a minimum five feet landscape strip and a five foot walkway. And so um, that's really clearly defined. And then I added in the green some requirements for what actually goes in that. So now we're talking about this area, all the little green circles around this site. And so this site has- Around the building. Itself. Around the building, sorry. So this site has parking and uh, dry valves on the whole perimeter of it. And so that five foot uh, landscape strip and five foot walkway is required except in the rear, that's an exclusion that I added. Um, and then they would have to do one shrub every four linear feet within. So this particular site, that's 75 shrubs um, that they would have to put around the building. And you can exclude, uh, so entryways are excluded. <laughs> so if they had an entryway on the side or this was a multi-tenant building with doors, those would be excluded, but I'm thinking if those are excluded for this, and do we really need to exclude the rear facade? Um, exclude, exclude the rear, rear facade. Or if we were to exclude the rear facade, like I said, excluded the rear facade um, only so as to allow for appropriate service entry mm -hmm. um, to the building. So maybe add it to the. Yeah, exactly. So in other words, we still want a buffer in the back, but you'll probably need, you might need a roller door or something like that mm -hmm. for, for that. And that's okay. You don't, you can have I, that. I can definitely add that. Yeah. Uh, I. I think um, we need the landscaping in the back if the back faces a residential area. Yeah, if it's visible from another. Yeah. I, I'd say not even, I'd say if anything, even I if I agree with Yeah, I mean, um, it's going to be visible sometime or sooner or later. Yeah, and, and you think of the ugly backs of a lot of mm -hmm. retail buildings. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, um, I, I I I think again we know that the backs are different in the sense they might not have as many windows or might need more service entrance things like that but I still think the landscaping makes a difference and, and just because when they build there's no neighbor back there they mm -hmm. may be mm -hmm. yeah. so it's I think it is important to all four sides the the point that I just I guess I want to bring up and maybe I'm being devil's advocate or maybe I'm being too sort of ambitious here mm -hmm. is I'd like to think of our neighbors 
uh, in South Portland. I know they're talking that like all of this landscaping is now going to require gas powered mowers, is going to require, or we're going to have landscapers who are big on herbicides and pesticides. Mm -hmm. and has the Conservation Commission or Sustainability Committee or anybody weighed in on all the maintenance that's required on these things and the carbon footprint, the you know, greenhouse gas right? emissions. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a way we can have low maintenance or even non-maintenance? You know, I'm just thinking of the poor person who has to come and trim up, you know. Maybe it's not that bad if you have to go and trim a whole hedgerow of something. And mm -hmm. I know we don't want a monoculture kind of a thing, but I just, I really want us to think about long-term impacts of what all these landscaping sort of requirements are in fact saying mm -hmm. about the, our economy around Scarborough. I'm not a hundred, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about landscaping in my volunteer world, but I'm not following you exactly. What's the alternative if, if not this uh, it, it, it's like we're saying on this side we want to go more natural and we want to reduce our carbon emissions we want to do this but we're at putting in something in place that requires that to go up yep. it's like we want to reduce um I don't know, gasoline uses but we're requiring more parking we just doubled our parking spaces so we're kind of talking out of both sides of our mouth and yeah. trying to make them make sense but i'm talking about the landscaping i mean, I mean there's there's a the movement toward electrical <laughs> But there's a lot of um, landscaping, and it's important to look at the species yep. and the planting. Like it doesn't have to be this uniform, That's amazing. Right. You know, you I can. Mean, we have no city arborists, or, or no, we don't have any like that. Uh, no, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I I lived in a place where we wanted to plant wildflowers and prairie grass. Mm -hmm. We were cited for doing that because there was a requirement that grasses be no higher than six inches. Yep. And my point is, to Robin's point is, if we allow natural planting mm -hmm. such as wildflowers and prairie grass, we need to perhaps be more specific about that. But that is an allowable yeah. uh, option. Again, moving toward um, self-sustaining. Yeah. So I think planting. What that I they, need they to still require a good deal of maintenance. Oh, they maintenance. still require maintenance, but yeah. not <laughs> the intensive kind of weak. And sure. And what I'm saying, Marvin, is that I would love to have someone be a gardener such as you and others at this table who go out and carefully prune, but that's not what happens at these commercial. That's not the alternative is to pay them. No, nope, so, that's not an alternative. That is an alternative. It's one alternative. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, I, think what, no, I, understand that. I think what we can do is really, when I say shrub, it's usually your brain conjures up this very manicured shrub. Shrub can actually be several things. So it can be a lot of things on our plant list, like native grasses and things like that. So I'll just clarify you know, some of that. Landscape maintenance plans. Yes, yes. It's okay. in here, it's in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I would say that the subject specifically is we have the 60% native plant requirement. If you want to go in the direction that I think you're talking about, you could increase that. Absolutely, but I'm saying go a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for yeah. that. Okay. Would, given that conversation, mm -hmm. though, is four feet, the four foot requirement, mm -hmm. necess I mean, can that be enlarged so that you put in a few less shrubs, but you still have coverage? Because you're requiring one every four feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's for one feet. linear foot per okay, feet. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if we've got that concern and we want to start adding some in the back now. Right, right. Or, or reduce the requirement at the rear of the building. I'm just I'll be honest, asking, I, asking a question. I, I, I think, I hear Robin's concerns. I think it might be a bit ambitious in 2023. I think it, I think it's something we should be pointing towards, but maybe more than we can achieve this go around. But well, we've got to start somewhere. You know, and, and what I'd say is, in the, in the section M, on, um, I think we build it into the installation guarantee and maintenance section. So we ask for maintenance plans designed to minimize 
um, gas powered um, uh, 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 maintenance equipment or something like that. Or, and you know. also fertilizers, pesticides. Yeah, but, 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 but like, like I said, I think uh, section N is probably the place to do it. All right, and because uh, I, I, I don't disagree with where you're going on it, I just think for the for this one, I just want us to stop for one second here. Our time is technically up. I don't know how much longer we want to try to continue this. Usually, Robin, you have to get out of here right away. Um, do we want to stop at this point? I don't know how that impacts. Can I get uh, through one more slide? <laughs> Yeah, I, that's my question. And is it, you know, for the people who can stay, are we okay with that? I, well, we're, we're talking five minutes, 10 minutes tops. Yeah. Okay. We're talking. Can we hour, cover it now? Yeah, I just wanted to get through this one last slide. And this is. <laughs> Let's do it. No, you, right. no, you won't. Let <laughs> <laughs> I me mean, just pull it up. Look, it just went no. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's really strange. It's Can amazing. you talk to it? Uh, God. Got shot. Yes. <laughs> so the last one. So again, I just wanted to get you all through the requirements for the site. So this particular site, if you recall, it, they needed to do 13 trees. And so they were required to do seven trees in the front. And then their entryway, they could use those trees. So 13 minus seven. And then they had to do those three islands. So 13 minus seven minus three. So they still needed three trees. And that's they have a lot of extra shrubs. They cover the shrubs. So if you, there were yellow circles. And so yes. they added those extra trees. And so that's why that minimum sort of, for some sites, you're always going to get way over, but some sites you won't. So at least, you know, that's why it's in there. At least, you know, that's what you'll get. Um, and that, um, and I don't know if you all realize too, there was a difference between what was required, the rate of trees and shrubs for industrial manufacturing sites. So that was less, this was just a retail typical site. Um, Is it this side with, without a dumpster or any uh, HVAC stuff. Right. And then of course screening requires additional landscaping and then dumpsters, so all that. I just wanted to get through this site portion yeah. for today. Okay. Yeah. Um, more than anything. So, did you end up putting the additional three circles? The three circles. The three the yellow three circles. The other areas. I thought those might be lighting. No, there's I the there no so many shades of green. Uh, those were the extra three trees. So, they achieved their minimum. And in the ordinance, to make our labs really easy, I included um, this table that's actually required on your landscape plan mm -hmm. because you'll get so many people doing so many iterations of so many things. And if you say, fill out this plan, put it on your landscape, fill out this table, then we can review it and it's really easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you go, that's what all of these things are. Um, yeah, that was very good. And so that that makes our life easier, and I think it makes developers' lives easier yeah. too to know exactly. And, and it makes it very uh, it makes it easier to double check and make sure yeah. they hit their fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so they don't try to say it a different way, so yeah. it feels like they meant it, but they didn't. Yeah. The, I, I the only that other thing that I wanted to point out here was that as you were going down through this ordinance, if I'm not mistaken, these changes because we didn't see the red line, if you will, of what didn't get included, is that all of the buffering language that was in each one of these sections has been removed and it appears like it was put into a table. Oh, from the, um, yes, the language in the different zones was right. put into the table. It was all put into the table. The so line. that was something that you didn't get to see, if you will. I attached it. Yeah. It's no. an attachment. Okay, I missed it. That's okay. My bad. Oh, I got the table. No, there's an the attachment table. with red lines. I did not I think it's see number that. four. Okay. Um, all right. Good. You're covered what you wanted to cover. I have one question. Yes. Uh, what did we decide in the back of the building? Was that did we get through that that we're going to add? Yeah. I think we yes. did. Okay. Yes. We were gonna in we added a multifamily to residential buffer. We added um we changed the, I have 10 or 15, so for that. I know Robin's gonna go, but I wanna just ask one quick question before I do. I would ask See the Robin. indulgence of this particular oh, oh. committee, would it be okay if our next meeting was August the 9th instead of August the 7th before Robin leaves? Yes. 
August the 9th, August 9th August instead of the second. August 9th oh, instead of the second. Second. <laughs> and the rethinking being. It's for me personally, to be honest with you. Well, that's, that's, then that's I a good so I, I am yeah. trying to maintain my 48th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Got it. You want to go for 49? <laughs> yeah, I want to make it to 49. <laughs> that's fine. So, yeah, final thing. Okay. The one comment I was going to make about that that um, uh, form that you kind of included in here. Uh -huh. um, you heard some comments from Robin and, and, and kind of general concurrence. Maybe add some things about the maintenance plan or about the um, you know pesticide use um, or herbicide use, whatever that would to that form. So okay. there's some, some detail to the to the what the maintenance plan will look like ahead of time. And that section on the maintenance plan, you've heard some comments from us. So you know, as you take a look at that for the next meeting. And and I, I think we should pick up the discussion next time there. So I think I have some yeah, yeah, exactly. along that yeah. way. So yeah. I think though if she or anything definite. Yeah. If she takes uh, the yeah, first cut at it, we can we can go from there. I agree. Perfect. Totally. Right. So thank you everybody for indulging me. I appreciate it. Uh public comments. Do we have anybody online, Eric? Uh, uh, no one online. No one online. All right. Uh any staff updates? I have some, uh, the rate of growth ordinance passed and is in effect as of July 1st. It's a bit different. Um, if you have questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. And then LD 2003 is moving forward and should be uh, in place by August. It did get a six month additional time span for uh, approval by the city. So LD 2003 has to do with the state law for affordable housing opportunities and housing opportunities in general. And so it affects accessory dwelling units, single family homes, and density bonuses for affordable or workforce housing. And you say it's in, will be in place in August and the council. The council, it's moving forward, yes. Voting. Okay. I believe yeah. so, yes. In they August. have more time. Um, okay. It's already gone to first reading and planning board public hearing. So it's on the agenda for next Wednesday. But if the council keeps it on, that's that's okay too, because it doesn't have to be in effect right away. Yeah, and and while this is not a staff um, comment, the the planning board now, when it makes its uh, motions, uh, includes if it's includes at the bottom uh, something that updates the number of uh, units uh, that now, especially with the downs. Mm -hmm. The, the number of units that are now taken up that this motion has passed. So we're keeping uh, running track. We announce it to the public if they want to, if they care, if they want to know, uh, so that somebody can at least know that we're we're monitoring that. Is that an initiative the planning board took on to them? So, so that's an initiative that Autumn suggested to us, and I thought it was really good. Idea. So the rate of growth on it's changed a bit. You before you had to get a building permit to get it, and we have a nice spreadsheet online that you can see each building permit's pulled. But there was a lot of discussion, like site plan is a, a, quite an expensive undertaking, and so between site plan and building permit can be six to eight months. But if you miss out on permits in that process, that didn't seem fair. So the new rate of growth ordinance gives you your uh, permits and allocates them at site plan approval. So you get taken off the spreadsheet. So there's still a spreadsheet online and then there's an extra moment for anything site plan approved or gives. So it's a combination of so. And for clarity's sake, the rate of growth ordinance was formerly known as the growth management. The GMO, yes, the growth management ordinance. Yep. Okay, any other uh, committee member comments? Uh, I, I'm really looking at Ferry Beach water quality and um, uh, there was a beach advisory, I think posted yesterday, um, which is, as we all know, Ferry Beach is the mouth of the Scarborough Marsh. And we're gonna see more and more beach impacted days because we're impacting the impervious area in the headwaters of the Ferry Beach. So I think we're gonna be in for more and more of these unhealthy water quality days at the beach as a result of not only um, the development. development but climate change. Um, and you know, I know that we don't have any combined sewer uh, overflows and no CSOs, but you know. I used to be a Healthy Beaches volunteer. I used to take right. those weekly 
um, things. And Perry Beach after a big rainstorm or any kind of water event was always now. So I just want to remind us yeah. all to go back to uh, the basics with low impact development um, and any way that we can, um, I guess, add after the fact um, protections for Scarborough Marsh from the development that's happening that obviously wasn't contemplated enough in the zoning district. So, and, um... I, I know how to do it here. Some of it, but it's probably, yeah. I, and and some of that would be um, to not grandfather in changes. I, so if somebody wants to build a new dock where they've had an old dock and and their old dock goes into the marsh, you simply say no. I to stop. We need to have a lot of conversations yeah. about like, oh, what's happening. Oh, what's going on? Separate. Um, another one from from the zoning board. Um, when we get to residential, um, the residential districts, we're getting more and more requests. I think this is a post-COVID thing um, for uh, special ex um, uh, for um, special use exemptions. So the R two, the, the residential districts generally are, um, allow but require zoning board approval of a lot of home office or home business uses. We're getting a lot more of them, and so I think when we get around to that, I just want to highlight that as an issue that we need to kind of start yeah. to deal with. Um, so. Do you think that'll trickle off as the real estate? I I actually don't. On um, the way that the ordinance is written, it means that a lot. Of, I think more people will be looking to do work from home arrangements, which will still trigger the need for a for a um, exemption or, or or for an appeal. Um, so um, we generally grant them, but again, part of the purpose of the zoning board is not to grant the same appeal over and over. Yeah, that's so. one that should probably just be exactly taken care of with some performance standards. And, 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 and <laughs> there's one that's popping up a lot, which is um, uh, a lot of fishermen and shellfish guys are um, now operating their own home stands and things like that. It's going, I'm taking it to ordinance. Yeah, exactly. That that I know is taking yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it up, but it, it also includes a lot of folks operating small consulting practices and things like that. That's coming up a lot too. And that stuff I don't think is going away. Martin. I think that, that stuff is going to be We just have minimal yeah. traffic, it, like one visitor a week or Correct. Or, yeah. or a slight increase in FedEx drop-offs or things like right, that. Right. Yeah, so, um, and I'm surprised that we have those specific, like we even the farm stands and things like that, I understand, but the other stuff. Yeah, it's it's, it's and and um and it's even more so in the rural districts mm -hmm. where um where those home white collar occupations mm -hmm. are explicitly not really often contemplated. Mm -hmm. they, they are special exemptions, mm -hmm. but it's for both. It's not a pressing issue, but it's I want to, when we get to the residential and and, far, and farming district reviews, I want to make sure that that's on the agenda. Yeah, portion so. uh, from transportation. One of the questions I would ask is where is the requirement for bike racks going to appear? So landscaping. So we think can, it would be landscaping. There's but. a different section. We can put it in this section if you want. Um, it's not not lost on me. It's in a different like um it wasn't section. landscaping. It, yeah. It's combined it's, it's like, the amenities amenities like the bench. Yeah, 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 there's like a site amenities section. But I think as we consider landscaping requirements, buffering at parking, we also need to plan in. Let me put it back. Can, can we get people? I've had it in and place. then I okay. took it out and I can put it back okay. very easily. Because, it, because it, it goes along with requirement for benches for people yeah. on the yeah. entrances. And I did, did attend the transportation committee meeting Thank on you. your behalf. Uh, Portia, of course, can report on such matters far better than I can. But my takeaway, being a first time a guest, was uh, the concern that was voiced about people crossing Route One uh, because there are no crosswalks. Right. Um, I wasn't even aware there had been two deaths. Of, uh, that's real, yeah. real related to yeah. that, and they're considering a grant money, uh, put very loosely, that will enable them to establish some crossing areas temporarily and study how that might affect safety. Now that you're on transportation, can I pick at your house about oh, the timing of the no, not yet. <laughs> so just, just so that I you know, know but I'm you were is, trusted, I could hear you. Has, have you heard anything about that appointment going through the nomination committee? No, I'll double check with Angela. I thought it had. 
but I'm not sure. I don't know if, it, if it's been approved. Or not. So, it, it hadn't been approved as of the meeting. Oh, okay. I'll double check. No, no. I was. Yeah. And if you don't mind this Again? one coming up, oh, my God. because we're trying to move this forward. So you might as well stay consistent. Yes, sir. So you mean the bill is time. <laughs> All right. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have. Is there a second? We have a second. Any discussion? Not seeing any. All in favor? Aye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you again for moving the meeting for me. Um, and I'd like to come down to you, but Morris. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to start with the Peter. So, as I was going down through this, I didn't want to necessarily bring this up at the meeting. It's just more of a personal.